Welcome to my review and thoughts of Crush, the 2022 Hulu movie. And yeah, for the fourth week in a row, we are celebrating Pride. And yeah, so I watched this on Disney Plus. You know, for those concerned, it is behind the age lock. You can password protect it if you are, you know, sharing. Yeah, if there's kids nearby. But but yeah, also on Disney Plus, there is a Brie Larson hosted show about coming of age called Growing Up. Episode 5 is about a trans woman, the good and bad that she experienced. That whole show is recommended. And same thing for the short documentary, Mac Wrestles. Now, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie I absolutely loved. This video will have a bunch of jokes, and I will get into some serious topics. Now, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And I start the video with a review where I will not be spoiling anything, and you know, I spoilers start when I get into the spoiler sections. And do note, I once I get there, I will also spoil the ending. And yeah, so to be clear, I am a straight cisgender man. I don't say that because I'm afraid of someone mistaking me for gay or trans, any other some such thing, any other letter of LGBTQ+. But to say up front, I don't have personal experience with certain other things depicted in this movie. I will try to be respectful. I don't wish to offend any minority. And uh, let's see. Yeah, so I am going to be discussing some of them. I might be wrong if someone watches the video really thinks I'm wrong. Especially if they are sapphic, please let me know. I will take it down or edit it. And, yeah, if if all you're looking for is an edit, please let me know which parts I'm wrong about. Part of the reason I make this video is that a number of Allosis hat individuals will not listen to anyone outside of the group, and so might not hear anyone go into this movie who is an ally of LGBTQ. And... Yeah, and the same goes for, you know, the, the movie centers on the experience of young women... As an analysis head man, I've never lived as a woman, cis or trans. I try to show empathy, listen to the lived experience of women, but I am aware of have dead spots. So, yeah, again, if something is, is wrong with the video, please let me know. I will edit or even take it down. Now, this movie is rated R, and, you know, it's not quite, or TVMA, it's, it's, yeah, there's, there's, I guess it's not like a huge amount, but there is profanity, including several F-bombs in this movie. And the, the yeah, I might also swear in this. But, yeah, it's, it's very, very mild when it comes to, like, sexuality. There's a couple of, like... There's a little bit of dialogue that, that talks about sex, but it's not usually like explicit it's it's there's a there's a little bit that's explicit but it's not like non-stop explicit and yeah not no violence and it's not really a scary movie there is yeah there is a bunch of of alcohol drugs and and such now Let's see, and, and to be clear, I will not be using any homophobic language in this video. And, let's see, in general I'm careful to not use homophobic language in videos or in day-to-day -day life. I've watched this movie once, and I literally just got done watching it before I started recording this video and let's see yes so the plot I'm gonna be using some of the I'm to be here an aspiring young artist Paige joins her high school track team later discovers what real love feels like and let's see the Yes, that brings us to the writing. So this was written by Kirsten King and Casey Rackham, and this is apparently, I'm going to double check, it's the only, yeah, like, um, Casey also wrote 
a short called Indecisive Batman from 2014. But other than that, this is the only thing they've written that's like a movie or TV show or short or the like. They do a really good job. They really capture the the experience of of teenage. You know, some of some of the things in this movie are are universal. I distinctly remember some of those experiences myself. And yeah, they they really really capture. You know, Paige has a crush on Gabriella, and there's this thing about like every time she, you know she she can't. Every, you know, usually when she sees Gabriella, there's, you know, colors behind her and she's moving in slow motion. And it is this thing of, you know, she's very, very nervous around her. So she'll blurt out something that is not at all a g good thing to say in the situation, you know. And, yeah, you know, some of the... the there are there are miscommunications, which I suppose is not unique to the teenage experience, and yeah, you know, some sometimes they'll be in, you know, that there there's talk about how some of the school experiences are not very good and such. So just yeah, really, really did feel like the the yeah. It is not a plot twist heavy movie. There are some, and I thought they worked fine. I've seen some people say that they figured, they easily figured out what the twist was. I don't think that knowing the the twist really ruins the movie, and you know, it's it's not the kind of movie that you go to hoping that you will be surprised by everything in it, you know. Now, the, let's see, yeah, um, one bit of IMDb trivia that, oh, actually, two. During the scenes where AJ and Paige are training, there are several signs behind them advertising local businesses. These fake businesses are actually references to teen films from the 80s and 90s, including Stratford Sisters Paintball, 10 Things I Hate About You, Baby's Dance Studio, Dirty Dancing, which, yeah, I, I quite appreciate. That's a that's a great, because, like, the moment you see that, you're like, oh, right, you know, the, the yeah, Stratford Sisters Paintball. If if you know, you know, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone who doesn't, but, but yeah, you know, very, very memorable part of, of that movie, so, yeah. And the original title was Love in Color, which works... Yeah, because, cause, you know, there's, yeah, the protagonist is an artist, some of the cast are POC, so, yeah. And this is actually Sammy Cohen's directorial debut as a feature, you know, and I have to say, I've, I've not seen much of... Yeah, pretty much everything I'm I've seen of hers is the the college humor, you know, stuff that she's directed and the the yeah I th I think I'm just gonna yeah one one I will highlight you know there's a there's a bunch of them but. One I will highlight is the one called Facebook's Algorithm is Like the Mafia, which, yeah, that really, very, very much so. And, yeah, she does a great job. Like, it doesn't feel like, you know, so, sometimes when you're when you're looking at the first feature-length movie, the, or, yeah, not theatrical, streaming, but, you know, it's not like, it's not, um, yeah. You know, it has names in it. It's it's a recognizable thing. You know, you'll sometimes have stuff like, you know, one one of the big things is if you're used to directing music videos or comedy sketches or such, you know, you don't have to maintain maintain tension and maintain like an overall like the the storyline that goes through the entire movie you're not used to handling that and that's something you can really see you know the the um, 
So, so yeah, and and that absolutely isn't the case here. Like, if I didn't know better, I would definitely have thought she had done this before. So just yeah, she she really really absolutely nailed it. So yeah, this is a sapphic teen rom com featuring POC. The the star herself, Ron Blanchard, is apparently not POC, but you know several of the others, and no POC character in this is made to appear lesser than white ones. You know, we have um, interracial couples, and yeah, all, you know, all along, it's, it's not made out to be some kind of, like, that, that there's any you know, if this was the first thing you watched, if you've never been exposed to other, you would think, oh, I guess the world just has all different kinds of ethnicities and, like, gender identity, yeah, 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 gender identity, sexual attraction, you know, all these things just intermingling with no issue. And, obviously, a lot of places around the world that is optimistic but it is the case in some places, the, the places where people just grow up surrounded by all different ethnicities, they don't think any differently about them. You know, bigotry is taught. And I really appreciate that this, you know, for some people it's going to seem very alien to their own experience, but it can maybe serve as the kind of, th as, as like something to give hope. You know, as like, well, you know, if, if you... Maybe one day, you know, you can be in an environment like that. And, yeah, it can serve, as, you know, th this is the kind of thing that, like, you know, yeah, very much for teenagers. And, yeah, teenagers who watch this, like with, you know, not that I'm, I definitely have issues with, with Disney, but, you know, some of their, you know, comedy shows also very much try to encourage that different ethnicities can easily coexist. And I realized, you know, if you go back far enough, that absolutely was not the case for Disney media. Now, let's see the... Yeah, um, this is a good place to address the fear-mongering we're seeing directed at trans people claiming they're hurting children. Percentage-wise, cishet are much more likely to hurt children. Studies bear this out. If conservatives wanted to protect children, fight sexual violence, to be ex to be sure, extremely important causes, then they wouldn't be going out of the way to remove funding from social programs demonstrated to help. They would be in favor of laws that protect survivors of sexual violence. Then the question becomes, why are conservative pundits and politicians targeting the trans community indeed any disadvantaged minority. And the reason is they benefit from separating the working class from each other. It's a way to fight unionization. The tactic is referred to as divide and conquer. As I record this, the writer's strike... Hold on. Did, I, I believe it is still going and the... Let's see... Yeah, as far as I can tell, it is still ongoing it, you know hopefully the the writers will come out on top here but yeah you know it's very frustrating that it doesn't work as often as it should but it is heartening to see all the recent unionization efforts in the US in reality a poor white worker has much more in common with a poor non-white worker than with a rich white person unionization would improve the living conditions of the poor and make them harder to control it would mean that conservative politicians would actually have to demonstrate their worth to voters and it's simply easier to pick a scapegoat and then go after them, especially if fighting the scapegoat does not solve the problem, since if you solve a problem, it makes sense to move on to another problem to solve, and then we're back to how these conservatives don't actually want to help their constituents. And I, I find it fascinating. Apparently, there are still a bunch of conservatives who claim that cis is a slur. Now, I'm going to be linking a video in the description box that does a great job debunking that absurd notion. I, I will admit the petty part of me wants to fight fire with fire, even though deep down I know almost it, it almost definitely won't work. It's very difficult to compel conservatives to change, period, but especially by pointing out that they wouldn't like it if it was happening to them. So I'm not saying to do the following. I'm saying I couldn't help but say it here. You know, they don't want to say cis, even though it isn't offensive. In response, 
please don't refuse to pronounce correctly or use the correct term for things that they frequently talk about being. Don't start replacing the word Christian with cringy. You know, don't say saffron instead of southern. Don't call American ampersand. Don't call God-fearing dog breeding. You know, it's, it's probably not going to work, no matter how much fun it might be. But yeah, it absolutely delivers. The movie, to return to the, yeah, it absolutely delivers as this teen rom-com. You know, it, it gets the, the it, yeah, I watched a lot of these in the, well, I've, I have watched a lot of these that are from like the 80s and 90s and even some from like the 2000s and such. I'm really glad to see how progressive they've gotten. Like there's progressive messages without them being like mocked or ridiculed and you know the I would say that this basically has empathy for every like every character that yeah yeah I think every major character everyone that has like a line or two you know there's not really any bully character there's no character that we're just hoping to see lose or something you know and I really appreciate that because like high school is tough regardless but if everyone has empathy for everyone else it makes it so much easier so much less of an awful experience and at the end of the day like teenagers your average teenager is just anxious and and wanting to to you know wanting things to work out they're not these sociopathic little monsters that a lot of movies and shows present them as and yeah I really appreciate this it just yeah and yeah so some critic quotes a heartwarming fun LGBTQ comedy that delivers a much needed refreshing take on the coming of age love story charming and authentic with just enough angst crush endearingly celebrates the romantic comedy tropes and cliches uh, make that uh, all the more special after so many recycled boy meets girl love stories it's about time we had our wholesome cheesy girl meets girl rom-com let's see and <laughs> Crush is, for better or worse, just like every other teen rom-com, extraordinary in its ordinariness. It succeeds at what it sets out to do. Give LGBTQ kids a totally enjoyable, often quite funny, mainstream love story. Let's see. Yeah, some people said that the movie was boring, that the characters were one-dimensional and needed rewriting. I mean, to each their own, I didn't feel that at all. I was into it from right away and never, never lost my interest. I always cared about the characters. Let's see. Um, hmm. Actually, that's pretty good, but I think I want to put that in the spoiler section. So just real quick, I'm gonna put that in here. There we go. Um, let's see. See. Right, and so one critic points out, you know, the kind of authenticity of the movie springs from the fact that so many of the people involved, both in front of and behind the camera, identify as LGBTQ themselves, including director, writers, stars, Ron Blanchard, and oh boy, I really, I meant to look up how you pronounce this because I really don't want to get it wrong. So. Hopefully it is on. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. Auli Crivaglio. Auli Crivaglio, okay. Star of Moana. Let's see. And, and yeah, um, wait, did I end up writing that somewhere? I might not have. Um, you know, sadly, apparently, um, Rowan Blanchard has, um, let's see if I, if, if I, uh, yeah, she, she liked biphobic tweets, and this was unfortunately upsetting to Auli. 
Now, let's see, and yeah, so back to quick quotes. If this effortlessly multicultural sex positive comedy makes someone feel a little more comfortable about their place in the world, then it's crushing it. Absolutely agreed. And unlike a lot of current teen movies, Crush doesn't rely on technology and social media to create conflict. Instead, the film's structure and development is much more akin to that of a 90s teen rom-com, where widespread cell phone, cell phone usage doesn't exist yet. In that sense, Crush feels very simplistic, but not in a bad way. The lack of technology lets the film focus on the overwhelming feelings of being 17 and having a crush. The rush of just being around them, the quickened heartbeat when your eyes lock, the intoxicating way they smile at you. They, they do amazing with that. And let's see. Um, and yeah, this person says, you know, the uh, obvious plot is comforting. There's no anxiety about how things will end. And I'm glad that obvious today at least means something more dynamic with the way the teens are simply more comfortable expressing their feelings without twisting their arms. This certainly extends to the normalizing of diverse gender and sexuality expressions and identities. It's extra comforting in watching Crush that it's a lesbian movie that has nothing to do with being a lesbian movie. They even make a joke about it. So many of the kids are LGBTQ these days. And finally, as media continues to reflect the normalcy of today's youth's words, they now too have a just blatantly finds cringy coming of age movie with a perfectly rootable cop. I really don't think it was it's particularly cringy at all, but to each their own. Plenty of endearing side characters, lots of LGBTQ kids all across the background. Crush kind of feels like a TV MA DCOM, I'm guessing Disney comedy. Forgot to look that up. I meant to, but that's got to be what it is. In the most positive way, I mean, just look at its cast. It isn't a bad movie at all. It's. The good kind of cringe where you tense up for a moment, laugh it off, and just roll with it from then on. It's nice to have a movie that isn't trying to make any points or bring its characters out of the closet. They're living over-the-top high school lives just like the straight kids of countless movies before them. It's pretty sweet and pretty funny at times this is well, making it totally enjoyable even with its many awkward moments. See, I think, I agree that there are awkward moments, but that's like acknowledging that you can be awkward around your crush kind of thing. I laughed at every single joke. I thought it was incredibly funny. Let's see. Yeah, her friends implore her to consider going for many, one of the many other sapphic girls, but Paige deems them all unworthy. One is horse gay, which Stacy points out as reductive. One is Wiccan gay. One is too insta famous. One, had, one has fingered every girl in school. Dylan points out that she's washed her hands. See, and one is Gabriella's twin sister. You know, and and I have to admit, at first I wasn't sure like why the thing with fingering, you know. But but yeah, I mean, it's basically if she she may be, it's maybe not a very serious relationship kind of thing. I I guess that's yeah. I don't know. I I'm not gonna claim I always understand the the priorities or values of teenagers but that's fine but yeah Paige literally can pick and choose that's how out the school is you know it's not this because because that's you know if, if you are LGBTQ and you fall in love with someone unless they know and you live in a very accepting you know environment community, then you might really worry, well, is this person also going to be, you know, for, for one thing, are they also attracted to, you know, in, in this case, sapphic, are they sapphic, you know, or are they straight kind of thing? Um, and then, you know, if I come out to them and tell them how I feel, Am I, you know, are they going to hate me because they've heard lies about LGBTQ people kind of thing? And this movie is just like, no, 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 like, uh, there's that one, that one, that one, that one, you know, like just, you know, you could, you could throw a dart at a board and be like, I guess I'll go out with that one. Sure, that, that'll be a good sapphic, you know, robot. It's just, you know, because because that's the kind of thing that you know a lot of straight a lot of us straight people don't think about. But you know, yeah, like when I was a teenager and I was interested in a girl, like I don't think it ever crossed my mind. 
what if she's not straight? Like, that was just, you know, that was back when, yeah, when I was a teenager, that was taken for granted. And I'm really, really glad that we've changed to that, you know, so, so, yeah. Um, let's see, and, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I did, um, there was, um, one thing, you know, some, some, some people do not love about this movie, that it is very much this kind of, it, it is very heteronormative, you know, it, it basically, it acts like the, the, like, yeah, basically it positions it as that the, the, that that sapphic teen girls can have the same experiences as cishet and that's you know unfortunately we're not quite there yet at least there's a bunch of places where we aren't but you know yeah the the very heteronormative romantic comedy you know it has a broad appeal you know there i not everybody loves them but a lot of people, you know, it'll, it'll resonate with them. And some people won't say out loud that they do actually like it. But, you know, I, I think we, we should all be open to, you know, doesn't have to be rom-com. But, like, love, love. We, we should all love, love. And, and yeah, you know, for, for Sapphic, it is somewhat more complicated. There are certain things that, you know, yeah, some of which I've already mentioned. You also have, like, parental, yeah, parental pressure towards, like, you know, having a, yeah, uh, um, having a child without any kind of, like, with, without, a, without a donor and, and that kind of thing or adoption, you know, and, and the, yeah, you know, there, there are various things that make it more complicated, and this movie is basically, you know, f f some people have found that this movie does not acknowledge those, and thus does not have as much value, and I 100% respect that opinion, I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong, but I do think, yeah, based on the positive response, it's clear that a lot of sapphic teens really did want, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a hunger for this kind of thing, you know, like, there, there's a, there's a stereotype that romantic comedies are, you know, primarily for women, which, you know, I've, yeah, I've liked romantic comedies as long as I've liked movies, you know, when I, when I was seven years old, I was watching romantic comedies and absolutely loving them. You know, but but the the you know my my parents never told me that it was wrong for me to like yeah to, to empathize with women and to love love so yeah there's you know a, a bunch of other people have have told me that you know that there's something wrong with it but by then I'm happy to tell you it was way too late for them to have any you know I. Do not at all feel bad about loving romantic comedies. Anyway, there's a stereotype that romantic comedies are for women, and a lot of romantic comedies are, you know, very, very heteronormative. So, yeah, makes a ton of sense to, to make this kind of thing very much for, you know, the, the sapphic, you know, yeah, community. And, you know, personally, I don't, in, in general, I, I think... If there is even a small group of people who actually want some, you know, I, I hate it when, when people say, oh, you know, girls don't even read comic books. Why should they be in comic book movies? It's just not true. Like, there's a there's a certain vicious circle there that a lot of, you know, girls are, are bullied if they're caught with comic books. And and so they, they try to distance themselves. Now, uh, let's see. Yes. Back to credit quotes. The decision to cast LGBTQ, uh, yeah, yeah, actresses in these worlds is also is something also incredibly rare for representation on screen. It 
and it adds an appreciated layer of authenticity produced by Natasha Lyon and Maya Rudolph. Crush may have a predictable twist, some cringeworthy attempts at adult humor, but it's a vibrant splash of lighthearted fun. Above all, though, it's refreshing in the way it presents the LGBTQ high school experience. Simply, it's, it's just nice to see so many out teens in one place and existing in a world of only acceptance. There's no bullying in sight, no ounce of shame. Support is everywhere and it feels good. Like, there's actually a couple of, like, they, you know, the, the characters have already come out. They've been out for a while and, you know, yeah, we're, we're told about several times of, of someone coming out and there's, like, a mention of one where just the the um let's see what's the um there's a um yeah there's there's one of the cases where you know some of the people in the family were not supportive but it's not you know the the movie doesn't make that out to be the end of the world and I do acknowledge some people will, some people wish that the movie went into that a bit more. But, you know, as I, as I said last week when I talked about Fire Island, there are a lot, you know, not a lot. There are some really excellent movies about coming out, about, you know, struggling, but ultimately, you know, succeeding as uh, you know and and this this isn't trying to be that and it's completely clear you know if you watch the trailer or you know just it's immediately obvious okay this is not about you know oh the 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 struggles of coming out kind of thing now let's yeah, back to credit quote. Sometimes the supporting cast can be more of an annoyance than an asset, but that's not the case here. They each manage to move along Paige's story while carving out an actual identity for themselves, not simply an archetypal best friend or childhood crush. Let's see. Um, yeah, so one person really did not like, possibly more, but one person wrote that they thought the plot was ridiculous. Uh, Paige being suspended for something without any evidence is just lazy. This is, and uh, yeah, second is a teenager striking a deal to join a track team, even though she displays no athletic ability. This includes an assignment to solve the crime as the school hires her as a private eye. And yeah, you know, it's it's true that this doesn't happen in real life, but it's the same, it's, it's the kind of thing that teenagers would feel, you know, like the, the, she's going to be punished without having done anything to deserve it. She's going, you know, she has to do something she knows she can't do because other people insist, or, you know, that's, yeah, there's an expectation. She has to like solve other people's problems for them. She has to do the school's work for them kind of thing. It doesn't happen in real life, no, but it feels real to a teenager. You know, that so so just I thought it was absolute like I'm not saying everything about the movie is perfect, but I thought that entire setup was complete like if I was a teenager still, if I had watched this when I was a teenager, I would have been like, this is so realistic, you know, just yeah. The opening of the movie is excellent. It really, really sets the tone. Just, yeah, it's it's not a spoiler to say. You know, part of the part of the thing here is that there's this, there's someone going around, like, spray painting school property, leaving these pun, you know, things and. The, the opening is this montage of, like, it being painted on. We don't see who is doing it yet, but, you know, it's it's painted and someone's taking a picture and sharing and, and these things. And just, you know, yeah, immediately sets up this, this kind of thing. And, and the movie makes it clear, like, we're not supposed to hate King Pun who's doing this. We're, you know, we're supposed to think, oh, that's, that's funny. That's, it's, you know, it's kind of a... It's a silly pun, but whatever, you know, it's, 
the at, at one point uh, one of the characters says you know puts a smile on your face it's it's not some yeah and the yeah so I'm not gonna give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending but the ending fits with what came before I really really like the way the movie end. I yeah I love the ending of this movie one critic said that they saw the ending coming 20 minutes from 20 minutes in which I could I could see how that but you know I don't think that's a bad thing not every movie is supposed to be just completely you know it's not like there's a ton of things in this movie that I didn't see coming and and it still worked like you know part of the idea part of the reason we watch movies is to feel something and this movie made me feel things and uh, yeah so the that brings us to the characters yes so um, right yeah uh, uh, Ron Blanchard playing Paige Evans this is where I wrote it I forgot that before um, yeah she sadly has like biphobic tweets and didn't take accountability which is obviously not fantastic now the yeah she's a budding artist striving to find her place in the world and it's this thing of like I really appreciate you know she is smart and she does she's she's incredibly talented the movie never like some some you know again the ones I watched in like the 80s and 90s you know if it was a girl and she was like shy then the movie would hide that she has like she's really talented or really smart you know that has to be like late because the shyness means that we can't like her yet and it's I've always hated that trope so I really appreciate here that they don't feel the need to do that you know and and yeah you know it's it's this thing of like she's clearly you know she is not the the totality of her is not the the mess of of awkward statements that she becomes when she's you know she's right in front of Gabriella but that it's it's that thing of you know just yeah you know she's an insecure teenager and Auli'i Cravalho plays AJ Campos Gabriella's twin co-captain of Miller High School's track team and they, you know, I gotta say, I, I will admit I haven't watched Moana, but I would never have guessed that the, the oh, she was Janice Ian in the, in the Mean Girls High School Musical. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I guess I could sort of say, I've only seen clips of the, the, the Mean Girls movie but anyway um yes you know and and yeah some of the other stuff she's done is also like disney stuff you know so where this is not exactly disney's brand but but yeah you know i would not have guessed her playing a role like this but she really nails it just you know she there's this she's she's kind of mysterious and and yeah, it's it's just like she seems harder to to like you know some some of the characters uh, yeah a bunch of the characters in this like you could basically or Paige at least can walk up to and like have a conversation with and AJ is very like you know she starts to be a little bit more open when she has to train her for track because it's like okay if we're gonna spend this much time together better that we get along kind of thing you know but she's not really just yeah and Isabel Ferreira plays Gabriela Campos Paige's crush since childhood AJ's twin sister co-captain of Miller High School's track team I thought I recognized her name it's probably because every so often I look at the you know there's this show on uh, Disney Plus called Love Victor, and she is in. Let's see. Yeah, she's in a bunch of episodes of that, so that's probably where I recognize the name right now. If it's 
if that show is still on Disney Plus next Pride, next year's Pride, then I currently the plan is to to cover that because that one has also been called positive representation. I'm not going to be you know during Pride. I'm not going to do a movie that yes it features you know LGBTQ. You know, I'm I'm not going to do fucking dude where's my car, which is just so unbelievably transphobic. It's it's wild how how hateful that movie is. When, anyway. And she played the flirting woman on the bus in Joker, but I don't I don't even rec remember that character. I, I mean, I remember the bus. I didn't remember there being a flirting... Anyway, but yeah, she also absolutely nails it, and I really appreciate that they had some depth to the character because for a while it just seems like oh she's Miss Perfect which is just a really boring character you know just yeah I'm not gonna give away what there is but over the course of the movie you do very much get the the yeah you get more to her. Tyler Alvarez plays Dylan Page's platonic best friend, Stacy's boyfriend. I really, pre if this movie had been made in the 80s or 90s, maybe I should stop saying that. Anyway, this character would have been pining for Page constantly. And you'd have the thing where, oh, there's a, there's actually, you know, there's a guy that's somewhat appealing to the audience that likes the girl. Well, obviously, he's got to end up with her. And in this one, at no point is that at all. You know, I really appreciate media that acknowledges, yes, it is possible from, you know, boys and girls to be friends, to not, you know, they don't have to end up together kind of thing, you know. And... Tayala Dunn plays Stacy Clark Dillon's girlfriend, and both of them are just like constantly all over each other. And it's you know, they're teenagers and they're together and like just you know, no nowhere, nowhere that they go is someone saying you can't be together. So yeah, they're constantly all over each other, and they're like both of them want to be class president. And like the the movie is taking place in the lead up to the election, and the fact that like both of them are constantly you know like they're they're competitive, but their competitiveness kind of turns them both on. Like they're just yeah you know and and at one point Paige says, "You two are so straight that it's almost kind of gay." You know the. There's a lot of stereotypes of, of like, gay characters in, in media where it's like those two are just constantly all over each other. I appreciate this saying, you know, oh, you know, because it is like, I'm sorry, have you met a straight person? Like, we are all over each other when it, like, if, if two straight teenagers that are currently in a relationship are not all over each other it's very likely that they're around people who would make fun of them if they were. Like, that's basically the... Uh, yeah. Rico Paris as Tim, a student who is sure that Paige is King Pun, and at first I thought, oh, this is going to be the annoying character, and he actually really wasn't. I, I was very relieved that just... Yeah, and, and he's more likable than he at first appears. Asif Manvi plays Coach Murray, the track coach of the school. I've been a big fan of his for quite some time now. You know, for, for like, you know, when I think of him, I mainly think of, like, the stuff he used to do for the, the, uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll have it momentarily. The, he was... He worked on the... I should have written this down first before I started this uh, recording. Anyway, um... Oh, right, he plays an Arab cabbie in Die Hard with a Vengeance. He's come a long way since. He's, uh, yeah. Um... Is it really not going to have it on here? 
Okay, I um, Wikipedia is gonna have it. So Asif Mandvi, the um, yes, Daily Show from 2006 to 2017. So he was a correspondent. Yeah, really, really loved his his work on there. Just yeah. Let's see and. Yeah, he's he's really really funny here. Like when I when I saw the trailer, I was a little worried. Oh, he's just gonna be in like one scene. He's in much more of it than than just the the trailer maybe makes it seem. And he is incredibly funny. Like he's early on, he is convinced that Paige is King Pun. So like everything she says, he takes as like you know oh so. You you claim not to be King Pun, but very suspiciously, you you know like literally every everything she says, he's like, yeah, I, uh, of course because that means it just as yeah very very funny, and he's just I I don't want to give away the there's a there's one running gag with him that was very very funny um. Yeah, I'll just say that, yeah, he's he's very, very funny, and just, yeah. Uh, let's see, yeah, Michelle Buteau plays Principal Collins, who's also quite good. Megan Mullally plays Angie Evans, Paige's mother. I gotta say, when I saw the trailer, I thought that that was um, Aunt May from the, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, um... Uh, Sally Field, but no, they just look somewhat alike. And yeah, uh, Addy Weyrich plays Chantal, a Wigan, Wick, Wiccan. I know how to pronounce that word. I swear. And yeah, the the there's there's some really funny stuff with her as well. And and again, like. Literally no one is like, oh no, you know, there's something wrong with it. Like, if, you know, a lot of media would have portrayed her as, oh no, she's like mentally ill or something, or, or like dangerous or something. And like, you know, they make, they make some jokes about how she's kind of creepy, but it's not really, oh, you know, what do witches do? No, it's more like, oh no, she has... She has a crush, and she's not gonna let this go, kind of, kind of thing, you know. So I, I really appreciate that, you know. And and it never shies away from her being a wicked. Like again, you know, this is the school is so accepting. Like there's a bit early on where she's like standing at her locker, and she's got like wicked stuff out. Like she's not hiding it at all, and no one like bullies her about it. It's just that you know. And actually, you know, in the trailer, I thought, oh, I guess Paige doesn't want to be with a Wiccan. But in the movie, the contact, the, the line goes on, actually, and it's more that she's like, I don't, I don't know if I want to give away exactly what she said, but there's a, there's a bit more there, and it's not that she has something to do with that, yeah. And... Jess Tom plays Aya, an influencer, Gabriella's on and off partner, and the, the, uh, am I thinking of the right, I'm not 100% if it was Aya, I, th I think it was Aya, um, there is at least one character in this, I am going to be using they, them pronouns, because that's what others uh, do, and yeah, I, I'm not 100% certain if they are non-binary, if they're, they're trans or, or um, intersex, you know, I, I don't know exactly what, but yeah, again, literally no one, no one ever intentionally misgenders them, no one intend, no, no one makes them out to be like a bad, you know, they're even an Instagram influencer, you know, they, they have so much, they have support not just from, like, the immediate environment, not just the school classmates and such, no, like, they go online and people listen to what they say, that's awesome, just, and, and it is true, you know, there are, there are trans influencers, and I am, 
you know what? I actually don't know if there are non bind There probably are non bind Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. No, I am aware of at least one non-binary influence. I'm not big on the, the influencer scene. It's not the... So, just, yeah. Catherine McCaffrey plays Aaron Billings, who is obsessed with horses. And... Let's see. the Yeah, you know, it's a movie that really gets how teenagers behave you know the the various you know you see them you see some of them in class you see them just talking with friends you see the kind of stuff they may be high from others you see stuff that like yeah you you might see them with their their parents the coach the principal and you see, you know, them at like party and and just yeah, it really captures them very well. Now the the dialogue feels real and a lot of the comedy is in the dialogue and the the cinematography is really excellent. It's handled uh okay, wow. Does it really not say I guess it does not say on IMDb at least who handled the cinematography does it maybe it's on the okay here we go according to uh, Wikipedia it's Matthew Wise but he does not have a Wikipedia page of his own apparently yeah um, but yeah absolutely nails it like there's a lot of scenes where it's just like people you know talking hanging out the you know but and and for that it's it's fairly just straightforward but the where the the cinematography really gets to stretch its legs and really show off is in for example parties there's this great shot in in one of the parties where like let's see i think it starts by like a down angle from up above on like the stairs and pulls back and then shows you know the yeah people at the top of the stairs and then goes around and behind that and just really you really get a sense of you know it, it helps that this party is plastered with characters and extras so you know you really get a sense of because like at the end of the day you know I mean they set up stuff and then they pretended you know it's up to the cinematography acting and editing to make the audience believe oh they partied like for hours you know, they may be shot for hours, but it wasn't necessarily a party in real life. You know, if it's actually that's something that you I I do not speak from experience, but ah crap, I forget. Oh, it might have been on the first Evil Dead, among others. You know, but but yeah, um, do not actually let your cast get drunk unless you're sure that they'll be real that it'll be really good for them because a lot of people when they're drunk. They're no good for shooting, uh, you know, for, for filming something. So, so yeah. But, yeah, it really does feel like it's this, you know, it's a, it's a party, everyone's having a good time kind of thing. And, actually, yeah, that was, there's one part, an example of how our, out the school is. There's this part where someone draws, you know, draws a set of rests and... You know, another character is, you know, says something and, and defensive in, you know, he's, he gets like defensive and says, who doesn't like boobs? And there's a, there's a sapphic right next to him and she's like, cheers, you know, that's, and, and he's not like, no, I didn't mean, no, he's just, you know, just, yeah. And the, um, that brings us nicely into the editing, which is also excellent. There's some really effective montages, excellent use. Uh, you know, yeah, great setup and payoff. There's some some really great effective use of reaction shots, and the flashbacks are are quite good. It was edited by the by Melissa Ramanarish Aperlo who has uh, 11 credits in total 
and yeah some of it is short and video TV series but this is not the first movie they've that that she has edited oh they have no yeah she has edited anyway the the yeah it's it's um I'm I'm really really glad I I I was worried for a while that the the reaction shot was dying out and I'm really really glad you know in recent weeks I've seen movies that that absolutely still have it and just it's if if you don't think that a reaction shot can make something much much funnier or you know depending on the the genre maybe much scarier or much more dramatic that kind of thing you know try to watch something and then like you know if, yeah if you can you know try to edit out reaction shots and just leave in the other stuff it's just it's no it's not at all the same and yeah this one has some some really really great reaction shots and just yeah and the um, I think that is what I will yeah it's it's one of those movies that is able to make it clear that certain characters are miserable bored anxious without the audience feeling the negative of that like we can we can appreciate oh that's they're definitely feeling that but we are not bored or, or anxious or the like and yeah that brings us to so yeah this was filmed in Syracuse New York uh, yeah a, a lot of a lot of location shooting it at least looked like to me and that works really well and right that brings us to the music which uh, there's also okay there's a music department music supervisor and music editor Andrew Brader Andrew Brady was music supervisor Brad Hamilton was music editor and yeah they did a really great job like there's a lot of music that just really feels like you know I don't I don't really pay attention to music much at all in in like uh, uh, in what's popular I mean and I don't you know, I, I pay attention to music when I'm watching something or, or the like, but yeah. This felt very much like something the kids might actually be listening to, you know. And it sets the tone well. And that brings us to... Yeah, so the, the comedy... You know, we have jokes about teen awkwardness around love, adults such as school employees and parents trying to be relatable to teens, accepting of them, but ending, ending up like, uh, please don't do that, you know, mildly cringy. You know, we have jokes around, like, yeah, drunkenness and, you know, yeah, emotions and the 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 ups and downs of of having a crush kind of thing and yeah so the 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 pacing is is good it's never like just really slow and the movie is an hour and 28 and a half minutes without end credits and an hour and 33 minutes with end credits and you don't really have to sit through the the end credits now yeah so that brings us to the yeah, yeah the best elements you know having yeah the fact that we now have sapphic teen rom-coms that can help sapphic people get an experience denied to them for decades how funny it is, how charming it is. You know, you want to spend more time with these characters. Uh, the worst aspect, I mean, I guess it is predictable, but I really don't think it's a big deal. Um, you know, I, I mean, 
yeah, romantic comedies, you know, it's one of those genres that are fairly predictable, you know, like, like slasher movies and, and just, yeah, you know, biopics, like there's a, I don't think being predictable is, is automatically like bad. And yeah, a common complaint I saw from others is the, the, you know, this thing of, of cringe and some people thought it was boring and yeah, I, I, I disagree on, you know, it's maybe a little, there's maybe a little cringe, but like, I'm not, I'm not into cringe comedy. I'm, I'm, it's fine for those who are, but I'm not personally really into it. Um, and, and this didn't really strike me as, as cringe at all, much at all. And let's see. Yeah. So the, the thing I was most worried about was that it would be too, that it would be too eager to cater to heteronormativity. And, you know, I think, yeah, actually, the, the, um, there definitely are some, the, the, you know, it definitely is more focused on just delivering a very straightforward instead of really going into, but I think it worked for it. And one of the things I'm most looking forward to was the, the diversity on display. And yeah, that was really great to see. And, you know, it, it's one of those movies that really help fight back against this absurd notion that if you see a diverse cast of people, it means that they were cast over white people who were more talented. Like, there's definitely, there's a lot of untalented white people in Hollywood who are getting by because people like, you know, certain things that they said, like, the 90s action movies were, you know, pretty dominated by, like, and, and to be fair, that's not, like, zero diversity, but, like, a lot of them were white. White men from various European countries who couldn't really act much at all, but with, with some exceptions. I will grant that Schwarzenegger definitely gave some really, has given some great performances, including Terminator and Conan, the first turn, the first Conan, I mean. Um, but the, yeah, you know, people liked seeing them in stuff, so they kept getting roles. But yeah, every single cast member here that's, you know, of a minority, clearly they earned it. Now, the trailer does give at least a little bit too much away, but it's not, like, it could be much, much worse. And it definitely gives a good, like, you get a strong idea of what the, the movie's like from watching the trailer. And whether you decide, you know, if you decide to watch the movie, you know, it's, like, personally, I'd probably, if you're going to watch the trailer before, try not to pay too much attention to details. Just get the vibes, you know. But I do recommend watching the trailer, maybe just after watching the movie, but for sure, it's, it's worth watching. The cover and poster do not give too much away and do give a good idea of what the movie is like, as much as a poster can for this sort of thing. And that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where this has a 78 on the tomato meter, based on 36 reviews, 28 of them fresh. 6.20 is the average, out of 10, is the average rating. It has an 82% on the audience score with more than 100 ratings. The average rating was 4.2 out of 5, and the consensus. Some of the writing is stilted, and the execution is occasionally uneven, but Crush's central love story is easy to fall for. On Metacritic, it has a 56 out of 100. Based on 7 critic reviews, 2 positive and 5 mixed. And let's see the um, 
yeah, the the and and the user rating. Um, yeah, the overall user rating is five point nine out of ten based on fifteen ratings, seven positive, five mixed, three negative, and yeah, the the. Right, and on IMDB, it has a 6.3 out of 10, and 24.8%, oh, right, based on 8,100 ratings. 24.8% gave it 10, 19% gave it 7, 16.5 gave it 6, 13% gave it 8, 7.9 gave it 5, 6.8 gave it 9, 4.6 gave it 1. I have to wonder how many of those are, like, people who just don't think, you know, yeah, um, homophobes, maybe. It, I, I really wish I that there was just a separate one for, like, homophobes. I gotta say, I find it difficult to, I, I don't know what else would make someone hate this so much that they only gave it a 1 out of 10. Anyway, um, 3.8 gave it 4, 2.0 gave it 3, 1.5 gave it 2. And there are 50 user reviews, or 44 if you hide spoilers. And the let's see yes and of the of the 50 0 gave it 1 out of 10 1 gave it 2 0 gave it 3 or 4 3 gave it 5 3 gave it 6 11 gave it 7 3 gave it 8 6 gave it 9 23 gave it 10 so yeah definitely more positively received than negatively and Right, there are 20 links in the IMDb external reviews section. 19 of them worked. You know, yeah, not dead links, and they were in English. And I saw that it, let's see, there was one award. It was, right, it was nominated by Glad Media Awards for Outstanding Film, Streaming, or TV, but it did not win. And... Right, so there, <clears throat> there are not a lot of special effects in this, but the ones that there are, and you know, wouldn't have made a lot of sense. It would have been distracting, but the ones that there are, you know, one one thing is whenever Paige sees Gabriella, there's colors behind her and she's moving in slow motion. The slow motion they might have just filmed it using, the, you know, yeah, on the spot filmed in slow motion. But the colors, you know, that's a special effect, and they do a really great job. Like, it really does feel like the, the you know, just, yeah. And, let's see, there's not a lot of stunt stuff, but the definitely, you know, yeah, there are some that are quite good, and... That brings us... Yes, in the description box, I will put some links to... Most of it is not going to be specific to this movie. It's going to be, like, LGBTQ stuff in general. Now, that... Right, on Disney+, Plus, this has no extras. I cannot say for those who are watching it on Hulu... And, yeah, uh, I rate this 8 sweet sapphic teen rom-coms out of 10. This is a movie that I could easily watch again later today. And, yeah, 100% gonna, gonna watch it again. And, yeah, I think, I think there's some chance that in the future this is a movie that, you know, I, I really hope that we get to a point where LGBTQ people are much more accepted and I think once that happens, this is one of those movies that are going to get a reevaluation. You know, I, again, I'm not saying that the only people who have a problem with it are homophobic, because there were some some criticisms that were, you know, actually from 
LGBTQ people and or legitimately like okay that's a, that's fair of this movie kind of thing and I, I do think it deserves more attention than you know it, it really doesn't seem like that many people have you know again like the movies from 2022 and has 50 reviews on I'm DB Birds of Prey, which is an amazing movie, and I will not hurt hear a word to... Okay, sure. If you feel like you, you know, if you feel like you have a really good argument against that claim, put it in the comments. I'm, I'm willing to debate it. But anyway, that movie's from 2020. That has 2,712 reviews. It's also starring women. There's all, there's at least one sapphic, you know, so, so... I'm not saying that they appeal to the exact same audience, though both movies appeal a lot to me, but, you know, and I, you know, yeah, Birds of Prey was in theaters, not on a streaming platform. Now, that brings us into the spoiler section, so please stop watching if you haven't already watched the movie. I hope I've been able to talk some of you into watching the movie. And we're going to dive right into so notes taken while watching on the paper, as usual. Really love the, the opening credits with us seeing all the, the King Pun stuff, seeing it be painted on, and they're careful and they're not sure who is doing it. And yeah, we get the, the narration, which I thought worked quite well and we see, yeah we get the the coming out things you know she came out to her mom and you know her mom they they do the thing where you know i, th I think she just says also i'm gay you know and and mom hits her head on the the neighbor kid is gay i'm i'm sorry that was just my first impulse that's so great for you on you know just and and the and I also like when when the you know when she came out to to Dylan, I like girls, so do I, you know. And he hands the the snack thing. He just yeah, that was that was funny. And that yeah, that's that's a good way for that to go, you know. Right. I guess you know what I think. I will just briefly at the end. Yeah, by the end of the movie, we know that AJ has had a crush on, uh, you know, Paige from, you know, since they were little and, you know, yeah, since the, the flashback, you know. And, yeah, for some of this movie, she is kind of, you know, she says some, some harsh things. And, you know, I think it's fair to, you know, briefly explore why that might be. And I think... You know, when yeah, for example, when the the you know AJ doesn't seem like super happy that Paige is there when Paige walks up to to talk to Gabriella in the in the school hallway. That's because Paige is there to talk to Gabriella. She's you know AJ's like this again. I can't believe I'm always the second choice. You know, and then when you know when they're meeting up to to do track to to practice track you know aj is like i'm not your mentor i just want to make sure that you don't embarrass the rest yeah i want to make sure you can keep up with the rest of something like that the way i see it for one thing she knows that paige would rather have been training with gabriella so she's again the second choice and i think there's also like at first she figures, you know, if we can just get through the practice without, like, without anything developing, then it'll it'll be fine. You know, I can go back to being ignored by you for years again, you know, but if things start to, you know, yeah, it's, it's the, the, yeah. And I, I do really like this thing of, you know, we, we learn at the end that she's King Pun, and it's basically, that's her way of expressing herself, you know, because she can't, you know, she can't go up to, to Paige and, and you know, say something nice to her, because Paige is going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking about your twin, you know, 
and the the she has to do it in secret, so, you know, to keep it from the the parents, and you know, just yeah. And but yeah, so to go back to the the start, yeah, I I really like the the flashback of the the start of the the crush, you know, the the. This thing of, you know, the, the, um, they both have to, you know, yeah, Gab and Paige have to take care of the, the egg, and, you know, the, the, um, actually does the, the, um, what's the word? Yeah, you know, she, she like, ah, uh, what should we name it? How about lentil? That's so dumb. I like it, you know, just, yeah. And, yeah, the, the, early on we see the page insults Dylan as, like, a defense mechanism. You know, he's, he's trying to be very supportive, and she's, like, you know, she's a, she's a teenager who, you know, they're still friends, it's not quite that, you know, but just, yeah, the, the, I, I, and I quite like the thing with, you know, you know that class president doesn't have, that doesn't give you any actual power, right? That is a very, you know, how, how can you say that about democracy, that, that kind of thing, just, and, yeah, <laughs> Gabriella talks directly to Paige, you know, she's not just like, Oh, she's like talking to someone and Paige is doing No, she talks directly to Paige and Paige gets really nervous and it's it's very, very funny. The thing with, you know, are you coming out today? Oh, I, I came out long years ago. Uh I I'm extremely gay. I'm I meant to the track meet. <laughs> Just yeah. And I appreciate, you know, there's there's um you know, we feel bad for it, but it's not like, oh, you know, Gabriella like makes fun of her for it or something. And yeah, so the the um, I really like when when the, the the you know, Paige goes to to get art materials and the the um, and the coach was standing, "I got you." Okay, turn off the light. Close the door. No, 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 don't, don't lock the door. And and the you know she has to go to the the principal's office, you know, and and the principal is like trying to be calm, and you know, uh, Coach Murray is like, I knew I was gonna get, I knew it was you, I knew it was gonna get you finally, you know, it was just a matter of time before you're gonna slip up, and you know, at one point the principal says, take it down, Dexter Morgan. Which I really, yeah, like totally. He's like, the, the you know, the my my dark passenger is is gonna be satisfied with with this kill kind of thing. Just and and the you know, yeah, she's she's insisting that she's not king pun, which is a pun on kingpin, which is wow. And I I like the the thing with you know. Are, don't you wish that you bought that lie detector when I told you? No, I still don't because I had to take care of asbestos. You know, it's that thing of like, so so just pointing out like school budgets are way too low, and the the thing with you know, yeah. So so they agree that she'll. Yeah, she'll she'll run track. She's on probation, not you know, and she has to find King Pun. I really love the coach as as bad cop. That was really really funny. Like it's this you know you get the the sense that like he's he he's hungry for like he he feels like he can go out and make you know he like basically yeah he he probably wishes he could become a cop. But he maybe didn't qualify for some reason, so now he's a high school track coach, and he's like, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put the fear of God on these kids." Gonna just, yeah. And and the 
I'll, uh, I'll, I'll play track. Well, first of all, it's run track. Do you, you really want her? She just said play track like she's a DJ or something. That was really good. And just yeah, I, I absolutely love you know like she's she's saying you know I the the you know I I ah crap I I don't actually remember the the exact dialogue but I I really really liked the things she says and how he like pounces on you know during the the interrogation. Let's see if I can find real quick. Uh, okay, it's it's loading. Um, hmm. Maybe it was too big of a jump. Oh, is it doing the thing again? For some, sometimes it just won't start certain things. Okay. The, um, oh, right, and I th I like the thing about how the mother is too supportive, probably. Um, yeah, I like that the the um, the principal says no. The the art is really good. You know, she's trying to be really just yeah. And the let's see the. Yeah, the 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 kids are tagging her in king pun king pun art, and Paige is like, "God damn it, Tim!" And let's see the yeah the lie detector, right? And he's always bringing it up, apparently. And that's also a great like great retort to this you know tough on crime kind of you know aggressive thing like no we have we have other problems that those money can actually solve and just yeah you know there's a lot of things that aren't solved by those this, yeah I, she's like I'm gonna suspend you and he's like call the police <laughs> What are you, Wycliffe Jean, ready to call 911? Do you get that reference? You don't. God, my references are like older than Taylor Swift at this point. Wow. And the. <laughs> the. The. Yeah, yeah, the. the, the you've got blood on your hands. It's, it's paint. Obviously, I know that it's a metaphor. <laughs> and the. Yeah, she says it's acrylic paint. Those things are spray paint. Let's jot down that Miss Evans seems to have an intimate understanding of the weapon of her choice. No one's jotting down anything. Just jot it down. Just. No, don't tell me what. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, you're in my office. You don't get to order me around. And. Yeah, and, you know, there's the these things of, you know, she was absent eight times, no extracurricular activities. And then she says, I play, I play, I play track. And he says, not on my team, you don't. <laughs> and he says, I just joined today. I'm extremely corroborative of this. So can't this count as a plea deal or something? Oh, impressive use of legal jargon. And... Just, yeah, really, really funny. Right, that brings us back to the paper. And... And so the mother and the coach are flirting, and I really appreciate they... This is... It's a, it's a thing. Like, it starts, what, 30 minutes into the movie, and... Oh, wow, it's... I guess it starts like, yeah, 16 and a half minutes into the movie, and it's going on for the entire rest of the movie, and yeah, I, I thought it was really funny, and I appreciate that they actually didn't, like, I'm sure some teens are going to be like, oh, they're so gross together, but they actually didn't really, like, you know, there's this, 
Yeah, yeah, like, clearly Paige doesn't like it, and, and Dylan, but, like, the things they say are really not that, like, extreme and, and such. And the thing with, you know, Dylan and, and Stacy, you know, make fun of, you know, the, the thing, oh, yeah, Paige is gonna run track, right, the last time she ran... There was a bee chasing her. It's on YouTube. I watch it every time. I'm like, no, it isn't. So we'll, you know, we'll just watch out for bees, and instead, you know, and this is this is a great. This is this is a real springboard for like a great like saving comment. You know, if Paige can just say something that like you know completely changes the you know, but instead she says. Did you know that male bees lose their penises when, you know, when or after having sex with the queen? I did not. And I honestly, I didn't even really, like, throughout the movie, she's, like, just quoting animal facts. And Paige is not great at, at track. I like the part where she's, like, you know, she's supposed to try to jump you know, the, the pole jump, I guess it's called. And she runs up and just stops. No. And and then Gabriella suggests, how about the, the um, yeah, I don't actually remember what it's called, but yeah. Where you just run in a straight line and and then Paige responds, it's the only straight thing I do. God, I regretted the moment it came out of my mouth. And yeah, she has to train with AJ, not Gabriella. Let's see, and and her and her mother both struggle with tampon use, and the carrot reminds mom of a sex toy. Just wow. And and the yeah the party is great. I really like the thing with you know. So uh, AJ, let's talk track. What? And then she sees oh Chantal is right. Yeah, let's let's talk track. And I really enjoyed the the good cop bad cop thing that the the two of them were were doing. And they catch Dylan and Stacy having sex while AOC is on TV like. And and I think it's AJ who says, cover AOC's eye, she doesn't need to see this. <laughs> like you like how some Christians will will like flip over their, their cross of, of Jesus for as as opposed to the uh, all the other kinds of crosses, you know. The the yeah. When they're gonna do something like that. And Gabriella and Paige have a lot of shots. And Gabriella says, "It's so I'm so glad you joined track. I never see you out of class." So just, and then she goes off to was it to dance with with Aya? Maybe I I forget. And the the yeah. Then then you know Dylan is like, ah, you are in the sad drunk phase, aren't you? Let's get you home. And I really, really enjoyed AJ and Paige, you know, in the, you know, before Paige leaves, AJ's like, have, have some, have some Gatorade. Sports juice. <laughs> and she shows up and like, you know, sunglasses on, like, wow, uh, how are you not hung over? I had some Gatorade, some pizza, some coffee. Also, I might still be drunk. And, you know, um, did you not bring any water? Only coffee? Listen, you're going to have to respect my caffeine, what was it, Ca caffeine, consum something, you know. And, let's see, yeah, AJ is very snippy, but Paige manages to respond, and I like the thing with it. 
Um, I think you're confusing, confusing miles with meters. Well, you're confusing me with the metric system, so... And... Yeah, the they talk about her art for Cal Arts. And, you know, I, I get how, like, once AJ is talking about art, you know, maybe that was how a lot of people figured out, oh, she must be King Pun. And it is, you know, it is objectively, like, really great advice for artists, you know, be vulnerable. And... Yeah, the the track goes goes really well, and there's some hugs, and no one high fives the coach. And now AJ has covers colors behind her and is in slow mo. And yeah, she finds the the notebook, and AJ lets her be on the on the skateboard just briefly and I appreciate the the you know the movie just using just you know people holding hands you know yeah it that really can like make a make a really big you know it, it can be the start of like uh, what's it called um, attraction and and such and they do a, a stake out <laughs> and you know she climbs over the and you you know that you know that it's open right <laughs> and she falls over and it's this thing of you know whose hand are you gonna take is it gonna be AJ or Gabriella and And AJ, uh, uh, Gabriella shares that she's not with Aya, who I just realized I might actually have been mistaken. Did, wait, do they refer to Aya using she, her? Maybe they do. And it does, it says actress in, in the IMDb. I'll, I'll try Googling real quick. As no, yeah, yeah. It says here they that, that the actress that uh, the actor uh, identifies they them. Huh. Okay, that's really cool. Okay, I'm just gonna. Yeah, Jess Tom they them is a New York based actor writer weird keyword stand up comic gleefully providing the non binary non binary keyword asian american radical cyborg perspective that everyone never knew they wanted that's really cool um yeah i'm going to be looking up th some of their stand up later i yeah very very cool um but i'm not sh i'm not certain if the if the character also is or or not, I I I can't really I couldn't completely keep up with all the there's there's so many so many things in this movie anyway and you know the the but but yeah Gabrielle is no longer with Aya so you know maybe and the you know she she remembers the the egg mom thing she didn't remember it was for Paige which is of course you know but but yeah like <laughs> Gabriella dropped it on the first day and begged her mom to buy another one and you know um, Paige gave the egg a bath and accidentally boiled it so both of them got you know and they kiss, and I really appreciate the emphasis on the the um, consent. That it's not, you know, oh, who cares? It's you know, let's just kiss. It's the the you know, and I I, I guess the fact that Paige does, yeah, you know, basically, yeah, Paige is like 
confused. She's not sure if she does, you know, which of the two girls it is. You know, it's it's a very it's very classic love triangle stuff, basically. But yeah, and let's see. Yeah, they recognize Tim's car. And yeah, um, Paige tells Dylan it was very it was an anticlimactic kiss. And you know, what does that is is that you know, maybe she needs to learn to 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 kiss. And so she's like, okay, so so kiss me. And Dylan there's no sense of like Dylan's like, ah, yes, I've been friend zone for years. I I Finally, I get to no. It's just no, no. I don't want to. We're platonic friends. I don't want to mess that up. And I have a girlfriend, you know. And and in walks mom. No means no, Paige. And earlier she was also no edibles before class. I thought we agree, you know, because Paige is talking to herself. And you know the yeah. Dylan points out maybe it's not the kiss itself. Maybe it's the person you were kissing. And coach and mom talk about edging, which, I mean, whatever you're into, I, I like that it took that leap. Like, you know, it starts out with just, you know, like it's, it, you know, the thing of, oh, you know, I wanted, I, you know, I wanted you before, but you said we had to wait kind of thing. You know, that's like. That goes back many, many decades, you know. But then turning, you know, making that turn and saying, "Oh, the the kids calling call it edging nowadays." I checked the Wikipedia. Just yeah, and and absolutely love like bringing up Wikipedia in the middle of flirting and and like saying, you know, "Oh, it was." I really loved reading Wikipedia. It was so hot. Just yeah. And yeah, page with more animal facts. And they they have a teen party, and because the because Dylan couldn't get very much from his his parents, some of it is like mouthwash and just like wow. And you know, I mean, technically accurate. You know, he points out you gotta chug a lot of it in order to get because because that's that's true. Like there's there's technically some alcohol in mouthwash. You know, because alcohol kills, you know, it doesn't only kill brain cells, it also kills bacteria, you know, but, like, mouthwash is not, like, I've never tried getting drunk on mouthwash, but I can imagine it must be absolutely just god awful. Like, mouthwash is not made to taste good, you know, you're supposed to spit it out, basically, almost immediately, you know, so that's, uh, yeah. And let's see the <laughs> yeah you know eventually you know Paige has been working her way up to confronting Tim, and turns out you know he's a uh, Rennie. It's that that's why the the you know he was in the the car the yeah. And I like that seven minutes in heaven is now seven minutes in a hotel bathroom. <laughs> because seven minutes in heaven perpetuates Christianity, which, yeah, I absolutely approve. Although, I, on, on the other hand, I know it really pisses off, like, hardcore conservative Christians, that it's referred to as seven minutes in heaven at all. So, you know, I don't know. Let's see. See and yeah, um, you know Dylan picks up the the phone and you know apparently the cover matches. You know it could be could be Gabriella's, could be AJ's. So he's like, okay, so what's what's the background and AJ's background is Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie, which awesome, you know, that is, like, she, you know, I'm gonna have to deal with that one later, um, let's see, 
now the the yeah you know us us cishet might not realize but tesla thompson in general and as valkyrie huge bicon so that's yeah really really cool Wait, did i turn off the audio or did i just let's get a real quick check okay now the the let's see Yeah, yeah, you know, um, Dylan pretends that that was actually AJ's phone because, you know, clearly there's, yeah, he's he's been wanting the, you know, Paige to get with someone other than Gabriella, and now that he heard that the kiss was anticlimactic and the just yeah, and. Yeah, the the two of them are are very sweet together in the yeah, and and apparently AJ hasn't had her first kiss before and they talk about kissing and they do kiss and it's very very sweet. And I do I I got to say I thought the joke would be that right right before they kiss or right as they start kissing, you know, the door opens someone say seven minutes are up or something, but instead it's that, it, you know, they're like, if we kiss now, is it going to be awkward? Like, no. And then later they're like at the opposite ends of the bed and just, yeah. And yeah, you know, we hear about the coming out of AJ and Gabriella and they talk about how it is to be twins. They talk about their mothers and the thing you know yeah mom just you know one day she wanted she decided she wanted a kid so she went and got you know yeah got yeah just you know decided got sperm and badass i agree that's yeah let's see and and both of them think that the other is actually really confident and they slowly move closer in bed and you know hours have passed Paige cannot sleep Gabriella is struggling with the fridge without a door she got dumped so she's really drunk and 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 you know Paige doesn't want to kiss Gabriella because she's crushing on AJ and Yeah, and and Paige talks to Dylan and Stacy about the the kiss, and they do the the run, and now AJ has colors and it's in slow motion, and they do the thing where like technically she comes in, Paige comes into contact with both of the the other girls, and it is this thing, you know, is she going to, um, yeah, what's the word, um. Ah, uh, crap. Um, you know, yeah, which one is she going to be with? And then, you know, Gabriella talks to, you know, Gabriella having no idea about Paige and AJ talks, you know, apologizes for, and, and I really appreciate, you know, there's, there's some, you know, obviously it's not great that AJ hears this, but again, it's about consent, and Gabriella doesn't project any insecurity onto Paige. Now, but yeah, AJ learns about the the kisses and is upset, and tells Paige, "I'm King Pun, so we're even." And yeah, she's ignoring Paige. And I do, I like the, the talk between AJ and Gabriella and, you know, this thing of, well, you know, they do love each other, but they, you know, yeah, there are some, some issues. <laughs> I like the, you know, the, the, thanks for buying my favorite dessert. Well, I mean, I did buy it for both of us. Okay. 
and yeah, you know, she sometimes she can be too supportive, but she definitely is, you know, Paige's mother, and she is legitimately, you know, yeah, she can help with this thing. She remembers what it was like being a teenager. And... Let's see. Yeah, and the, the montage of memories, all the... Yeah. And, you know, we realize, oh, AJ had a crush on Paige since the egg mom days, you know, like she, she was maybe too insecure to ask Paige. Yeah, yeah, she, she maybe didn't want to look weak in front of her crush, so she was too insecure to ask Paige, you know, can I have one of your pencils instead of going over and grabbing one? And, and then Gabriella sat down and, yeah. And I really like that, you know, at the, every single time that Paige is, is trying, you know, spots AJ, AJ turns around and walks in another direction to avoid her. And then, you know, they're voting. I mean, she can't run away here. So, you know, she's gonna, and she, she just, oh, excuse me. I, you know, getting uh, past the, the one, you know, in front of her, in front of her, but AJ is headed in to, to vote, so Paige just follows her and she stands. You know there are better places to make out, right? <laughs> and, let's see. Yeah, and, and then we learn later that, they were right, and yeah, I appreciate the, the conversation, you know, AJ brings up the, the things that Paige said and did that, you know, yeah, were, were hurtful and, you know, neither of them have been completely honest with the other. And then we learn later, you know, Paige goes in and I'm King Pun. Oh, you too, huh? <laughs> because AJ came in and confessed she's going to be back next semester. And the, you know, Paige talks to the, you know, Dylan and Stacy, and yeah, they they work, you know, all day. And I, I like the little, you know, the camera goes to the, the thing where it's, you know, election results tomorrow and then election results today. So we were, you know, okay, time has passed. And we didn't see what they did, but, and... Let's see, then the, yeah, and, and, you know, <laughs> Gabriella made a crappy arrow on, on the ground, and, you know, said, follow my crappy arrow, you know, and the, the, there's some king pun, you know, type stuff that, you know, so, yeah, you know, sort of, like, bonding, between the between Paige and, and AJ and they are legitimately you know pretty good things suck right now let's see and then there's the I ducked up with a very sad duck and let's see then we have the wanna talk about it wow and and yeah you know ends up in inside watching the the election result thing and yeah, we see that Stacy won coaches an accomplice to this. I, I didn't write it down, but I think like the way that um, Angie is filming the the Paige's big moment, that's gotta be a reference to Mean Girls, right? With the 
um, Jing Jingle Bell Rock, I think. Again, I've only seen clips, but yeah. And um, yeah, Paige has to give the, the big speech and starts out very awkward and insecure, and Dylan stays there like, this is a disaster, and then she looks up, good job! You know, and, and it's a coup. And some great crowd reactions, you know, at, at first they're like, um, okay, well, you know, and, ah, oh, yeah, whoa, you know, and, and then once Paige and AJ are, like, talking, because there's no microphone, so everyone's like, can can you hear them? What are they? What are they saying? Speak up! You know, kind of thing. Just yeah. And yeah, Paige has painted the happiest moments of you know the happiest moment of her life, and it's a collage of, of her with AJ. So that was you know it's it's the big romantic gesture at the end of the rom com, and I'm here for it, and it's it's great. And apparently, Angie and Coach are gonna make a sex tape in 90 seconds from now. And the Wiccan love spell was for Paige and AJ to fall with each other, not for one of them to fall for Chantal. So that was also, you know, you're welcome. I'm gonna, you know, that was a, a great, just, yeah. And, and that is, you know, not, not everybody thinks about that aspect of it, but, you know, we can, it's not, like, a selfish uh, faith, you know, it is about, like, connection and, and this, so, so, it makes perfect sense that she would perceive that both of them are, uh, uh, she would perceive that AJ is interested in Paige, and that Paige, and that they would be great together, Paige just needs to also fall for for AJ, so that's you know, um, I'm sorry, you're here. Yeah, I've been sitting here the entire time. Did you not notice me? And let's see. Yeah, you know the the movie comes to and and you know big kiss in front of the crowd, and they're all you know they they cheer in approval. And just yeah, really, really great. And and there at the end, Chantal and Tim and everyone is you know in addition to you know obviously Paige, Gabriella, AJ, Stacy, and Dylan are going to be there, but Tim and Chantal are also there. I guess yeah, cause cause Paige kept Tim's secret, and Chantal. You know, they've now accepted, yeah, Chantal actually really helped with, with this thing. And, yeah. And, and then the end on the Miller High School board. Yeah. Um, let's see, I don't, th there's not actually a huge amount of, th yeah, I think I will just briefly go into the yeah so some critic quotes uh, yeah some say that the voiceover is unnecessary and awkward I think it really worked um, it, yeah the visual use of colors blooming behind pages crushes is a wonderful whimsical touch the ending with Paige's speech revealed to AJ is a bit awkward, making it feel less romantic. I hadn't thought about it, but yeah, there's there's some truth to that. Now, this romantic comedy shows you that you will not always find love in the person you like. You will find it in who you least expected. This becomes a good moral for the teenage audience that begins to experience attraction to another person. The film also develops this falling in love in a correct way, not a ridiculous or toxic, which happens in most movies of this type. The plot is very predictable from the second act, but if you like this genre belong to the target audience, it can be an enjoyable movie. Performances are credible, although the character development is not proportional. While some have extensive demand, others have nothing. The love relationship is well developed, although the script does it in a very instantaneous way. The climax in the end may seem a bit ridiculous, although for the genre of this film it is normal to be like that. 
The film stands out from the others of the same genre, mainly for not falling into the ridiculous or the toxic, just as it stands out for having LGBT characters and relationships as the main point of the story, especially a lesbian relationship, something that had not been seen recently in a teen romantic comedy. So yeah, um, let me know in the comments what is your favorite romantic comedy? What is the best, like, you know, yeah, movie for young LGBTQ people? If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like Realm of Plays, this suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiled thoughts on a movie. I also do a weekly video on Secret Invasion, one on True Lies, one on The Clearing, one on Scream Queens. And I'm slowly working my way through the animated Star Wars and recently doing thoughts videos to make them out very similar to this one. In other words, if you more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back gallery as well as catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time. Bye. Trans rights are human rights.